this here is your best alternative to the mediocre RTX 4070, last generation's RTX 3080. Today we're going to see how the RTX 3080 performs in modern competitive games like Warzone 2, Apex Legends, Fortnite, Valorant, and PUBG. Let's see if this is still good enough for competitive gaming in 2023, especially in 1440p resolutions. Now, what we have here is the EVGA RTX 3080 FTW3. We bought this card off used from a 3D graphics designer for about 380 US dollars equivalent. And you may be able to find good deals on your own used market with the current oversupply. We pair this card with our Ryzen 5800X 3D rig, pretty standard setup, B550 motherboard, 32GB of DDR4 RAM, we just stuck a thermal ride cooler in there, yeah the $20 one, and we left everything pretty much on stock apart from XMP and rebar enabled on the BIOS. And we are recording using an external capture card so there will be no FPS loss during this benchmark test. Okay, let's start off with some synthetic benchmarks, Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2 benchmark. Now here's how the RTX 3080 runs at 1080p resolution. Now even at this resolution, we have maxed out our GPU but FPS is pushing it up to 200 plus. Now that's amazing, let's add the native 1440p gameplay in here and the 1440p with quality DLSS. And like before, try to focus on these three metrics right here, average FPS 1% and 0.1% lows alongside frame times. On regular synthetic test, apart from just looking at the average FPS, one should also look at all these three figures as a whole. The tighter these figures are, the more consistent your gameplay will be and this will eventually affect your precision. And like our previous 1080p run, the 1440p and the 1440p with DLSS also utilizes the whole GPU, pushing GPU power over 320 watts. 1440p considerably drops our FPS down to about 140 to 150 in this benchmarking environment, while 1440p with quality DLSS brings it back upwards to similar to 1080p levels at really close to 200 FPS frame rates. I think the results here are pretty good. 1440p DLSS would be the way to go if you want to maintain high FPS but would still want to keep that 1440p resolution. And Warzone higher frame rates are definitely good but visibility also plays a good part in this game. Hence why we'll be selecting 1440p DLSS for our settings. Okay, let's start with our real gameplay, Warzone 2, Almazra boys, and right off the bat, our GPU utilization definitely maxes out here, going all the way up to 100%, and we've got FPS going from 140 up to 170 plus here. GPU power definitely uses above 300 watts, and we've got VRAM consume at 9.1 gigabytes. Take note, boys. This also includes VRAM allocation for the game, and in our settings, we've got it to utilize up to 85% only. So frame times in here do have micro status, but these are usually negligible and tolerable. Frame times in itself are below 8 milliseconds, which is our golden number, and pretty stable, hovering between 5 and 6 milliseconds. Our 1% lows is more than half the average FPS at around 90 FPS so that's good and as always boys just disregard the 0.1% lows in any real world gameplay because in most instances this is usually affected by server issues and can heavily influence that figure. Warzone is using over 50% of our 5800X3D and it's running hot at 75 degrees celsius with our thermal right tower cooler with CPU power at around 85 watts. Our Warzone 2 experience here with the RTX 3080 is pretty good and I know the GPU is maxed out but the gameplay experience is generally okay and actually we'd be totally fine with this card in Warzone 2. Let's move on to our next competitive game, Apex Legends, and we'll start things off with a quick comparison between the 1080p and 1440p gameplay and the shooting range. Here you can see the difference between FPS, or if uh, 1440p is not far off with 1080p, it's still going high 100s, close to 200 FPS with all everything that's going on in here. Like Warzone, you get more FPS with 1080p, but in this game, we also require long range visibility, so we will probably stick with 1440p settings for our gameplay. And wow, look at that GPU usage, boys. 
all the way up to 370 watts. Okay, let's jump to an actual gameplay here and like before, GPU utilization is maxed out with temperatures at around 70 degrees. Surprisingly, our frame rates is pretty good indoors with 1440p reaching the maximum FPS of 300 whilst maintaining about 200, around 200 FPS outdoors. Just look at how this open field runs. Right. Frame times are pretty stable in this game. Just look at that. And this is one of the reasons why we love this game because it's so optimized. Our CPU is just hanging around 28% utilization, which is totally expected with a DX11 game. Still using 70 watts of CPU power and boost up to 4450 megahertz. So, yeah, the RTX 30. 80 is pretty good at this one. We're pretty fine with this one at 4040p. No complaints in terms of performance. Yep. Okay, let's move on to our next competitive game, which is everyone's favorite building game, Fortnite. And like before, we're going to run all three APIs here in our previous benchmark. Besides looking at the average FPS, try to look at all the metrics in here and now we have run this benchmark multiple times before we started recording so you can ensure that this is actually the best run for each api the only one that we can find that's a bit inconsistent is dx12 but it does go around slightly higher on some runs while going down again on some runs however from all three in here it seems like performance mode is the way to go for competitive play and because we still have that extra gpu headroom we might use 1440p performance mode for actual gameplay on our actual gameplay even at 1440p we are not maxing out our gpu in performance mode only using roughly 60 percent of the rtx 3080 the gpu power however still goes above 330 watts here so yeah vram is pretty minimal at only 1.6 gigabyte and look at those frame rates boys we're getting well above 500 fps and although our 1% lows can drop to 200 FPS. Frame times are generally stable with some occasional spikes, which is pretty negligible. And these frame time spikes may be from the server side as well. Our 5800X3D still functions pretty well here, starting to pull up to 50% usage with CPU power at less than 80 watts. RAM usage is at around 10 gigabytes. Switching to 1080p performance mode, and you'd see very negligible difference in terms of FPS and frame times gpu utilization is slightly lower however gpu power did drop to mid 200 watts and before we proceed if you like this type of pc hardware content focus on mainstream competitive games please hit that subscribe button so you wouldn't miss out on our new videos okay let's move on to valorant and as you all know valorant is a cpu intensive game and this game just loves cash here hence why we are getting really high frame rates with our 5800 x3d let's start off with some synthetic benchmarks again 1080p and 1440p at competitive settings and as you can see it's a very negligible performance difference between the two really close so i guess we might just go with 1440p settings on this game on actual gameplay, GPU utilization is around 50% here with temperatures less than 60 degrees Celsius. GPU power is at 220 watts with VRAM only using 2.5 gigabytes. Frame rates are pretty good at 500 plus FPS, even reaching 600 plus. And like before, we didn't enable 1% and 0.1% low metrics in here because of Omen's ability, which seems to alter the results. Frame times are pretty stable in this game. Usually hovering around 2 milliseconds with our setup in here and this is a pretty smooth experience boys i don't think we need to explain more about this cpu performance uses very little percentage but does push those clocks all the way up to 4450 megahertz pretty solid experience here with valorant and definitely no complaints finally we have pubg and in here we are also using competitive settings okay Let's start off with a side-by-side -side comparison between 1080p and 1440p. Now, we've got really high frame rates here on both resolutions and like Warzone, PUBG requires to have better visibility and although it is a much more slower paced game. So we'll definitely need to use 1440p for our regular gameplays here. I think we would have that long range visibility and sharpness that a 1440p resolution would bring. 
1440p FPS is still pretty decent, like it's pretty high at 300 FPS, so we should be fine instead of using the 1080p resolution. Now let's move on to actual gameplay and with competitive settings we are actually not maxing out our GPU at 1440p, we're just going at high 80s to mid 90s, however it does run hotter for a GPU at 73 degrees with GP power pushing even all the way up to 380 watts. Frame rates are pretty good, reaching up to 300 FPS. VRAM is only using 3.6 GB, which is not bad at all. Frame times can be stable most of the time. However, there are times wherein you get those frame time spikes, and this is really bad in game when it happens because you will feel those stuttering. Our CPU performance remains more or less the same in here, hovering at around 50% utilizations with temperatures at around 70 degrees. However, on smaller game modes like the comeback arena, it does perform stable in terms of frame times and is usually fine versus the regular battle royale map. Overall, the RTX 3080 is still a pretty good card in 2023 and it performs really well for our competitive games at 1440p resolution. There should be no reason for you to upgrade if you're playing competitive games like these ones. If you can find a good bargain at your local marketplace, we suggest picking this up instead of spending $599 for a mediocre RTX 4070. We'll be doing more hardware testings soon, so if you're interested in this type of content, please subscribe and we'll see you guys on our next video.